Hello everyone, in today's video I thought we'd do something a little bit different. Uh, first of all, we have a VR title. Uh, one thing you'll probably notice is everything is a little bit more steady than the last time I attempted to do something in VR. Uh, this is something I've been fitting with quite a bit and I'm kind of happy with the final results. Hopefully it's pretty smooth for you. So for today we're basically going to be taking a look at a program called Vermilion and I'm going to show you a couple kind of tips and tricks, kind of how to get started and I'm going to preface everything by saying um, I'm not a painter so uh, you're going to have to forgive me for my lack of artistic skills. I do know how to make things work however. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is uh, first things first I'm using an oculus rift s here so my right hand is basically going to be my uh, kind of point around do stuff hand my left hand here is going to be kind of my utility hand like I call this, call this the uh, palette hand if you want to think about it another way the first thing you want to know is uh, how to go ahead and move around in the room the way you do this is you take your trigger finger you point at the ground you squeeze the trigger and you're going to get this little circley thing here and the way this works is basically you point it where you're interested let go and it's going to take you to that spot now I'm kind of facing off in a silly direction here what's the deal with this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to position myself a little little bit closer to the canvas and I'm still kind of sideways so there's two ways you can fix this of course the way I'm going to do it is just turning in the real world but if uh, you run into this situation just kind of off at a funky angle you can actually come down here and then use your joystick to actually change where you're facing eh, it's a little bit better a little bit like that eh, I'll just go ahead and sit down the way I normally do okay so here I am I'm nice and comfortable I'm actually going to sit down for this one I feel like I never get to sit down in VR and we're just going to scoot scoot right up to the canvas all right so what do we got here so a couple different things uh, when you first start of course it's going to be a slightly different painting uh, sitting here in the middle uh, if you want to create a new one all you're going to do is you're going to come up here to the little save icon you can see I've got some really really uh, lousy crap here I'm going to click on start new painting you press yes and it's going to give you this thing here. Now, this whole easel you have here is actually adjustable like in 50 different ways. You've got these handles here if you want to kind of rock it up and down. You've also got this little handle here if you want to move this up and down. Again, pick it the way that works best for you. Uh, personally, I kind of wish there was a way that you could kind of, uh, <laughs> kind of do one of these things and stabilize it. Again, you really wish you can twist your hand just a little bit to get it so it's comfortable. Next, we go ahead and grab this, and it's going to give you all the standard sizes for a canvas. Obviously, if you want to do something like this, you know, you can do something like that. If you come all the way down here, and put it like this you know we'll do something like a 24 by 18 if you want to put it on your wall later on once you're happy by the way you're stuck with this size so make sure you're happy before you move on so i'm gonna put my hand right here it's gonna do a little checkbox and whoosh now i've got myself a nice blank canvas so with that done there's a couple different things we can do uh, first things first over here on the left side we got the layers option you can actually change what layer you're painting on by the way if you want to get rid of this just press the eyeball right there so for example if i wanted to to make like an all red layer and then i want to jump up a layer i'm uh, painting everything like green or something like a bunch of shapes or whatever we'll show you in a minute um, you can actually switch between it the reason you want to do this is because you're working with oil paints and oil paints don't really dry so if you and I put down this beautiful layer of green all over everything, and then I grab some red and go, ar, 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 trying to draw like some like an apple on top of grass or something, you're going to get a big nasty purple mess in the middle, which sometimes you want that. But again, we'll take a look at that in a minute. Other options, if you go over here to the little uh, thing, excuse my shaky hand there, you've got a couple different options. You've got a brush presser indicator. You can switch which hands you're working on. You can turn some audio on. Uh, the audio is kind of fun. You know, if I grab a brush, <laughs> you can actually hear it kind of working. <laughs> And we have, ah, put that brush down. Okay, cool. So you can do all those controls in here. And of course, uh, for those of you looking to uh, do some paint along or draw along, we can actually come in here and they give you YouTube. Um, I actually use YouTube for music. It's kind of fun. But you can also you know, put on a Bob Ross or something like that. And also up in the top, we have this really neat option that if you actually hit search, you can poke around Google, for example, if I want to go do something else. Let's go move that out of the way. For example, um, let's go do a nice classic airplane here. We'll do F space one. Oh, four. I'm going to go ahead and pop the uh, watch out there. You're going to press right here and press enter. And whoosh, we get a whole thing of Google here. So you can actually come up here. You can pick a picture that looks pretty good. Um, I'm rocking. I think that's uh, the, the one of the two seaters. So now if I wanted to take this and put it here, I could just press the view image button. Now I could press the overlay button and you can go ahead and boop, just like that. So now we have this nice little option to go ahead and drag it again, I'm using the grip. I'm not using the trigger to put it wherever we want on the canvas. And when we're happy with it, we're happy with it. By the way, this thing up here is for zoom. It's not for changing the size. Be careful with that sucker. If you're happy with that, you can just come over here and put it to multiply mode. You can put it to overlay mode. If you want to get rid of it, just click on it one more time and it goes away. Now, one of the coolest things with this, and I love this, is if you come up here with the copy paste, anything that you copy pasted, including something in your file system, will actually be loaded. So this is a photo photograph I took uh, many years ago. I'm a big photography kind of a guy, so you know this is just like a really neat bolt I saw on a bridge. Now, if I want to take that file now and stick it on here, now I have the ability to actually go ahead and go nuts. So I can go down here, I can change its intensity, and you can see now I've got a beautiful little kind of canvas on my canvas kind of a thing. 
And look at that. Now we can go ahead and paint that sucker. That's that's really nice. Of course, if you're old school and you just want to do it this way too, you can leave the image up here and leave this nice and blank and kind of do one of these things, kind of do one of these things and be on your way. Of course, you can get rid of it if you just want to kind of freeform, which is what we're going to do. Okay, so that's it as far as this side of things goes. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other features. First things first, you've got a big little jar right here. This is actually paint thinner. You know, basically what paint thinner does is it's going to make your colors a little bit less um, dark, thick, if you want to think about it. You've got this little place here. I always like to use this for the purposes of going ahead and kind of mixing some quick colors. We're just like testing it. For example, uh, let's grab this brush. By the way, when you grab a brush, if you hold the grip key, you can change the way you hold the brush. So if you're a person like me and kind of likes to hold it like way, way up there like that, you can. If you want to do something like this, again, it's totally up to how you want to control that. But basically what you can do here is if you want to collect some color, you sort of in here. Now remember, this is a physical brush. And if I come down here and look and actually push, you can actually see how the brush bristles actually change. So, you know, if I come down here and push hard like that, see how they're expanding? So if I have a lot, a lot of paint in there, you can see that it's going to have an interesting impact on it. You also get that little indicator to tell you how hard you're pushing. Like right now, I'm pushing maximum hard. If you want a lot of paint on a brush, you got to funk and really funk, funk to get that sucker in there to actually get the color that you want. Speaking of colors, before we even touch the brush, let's go take a look at the palette knife real fast. Now, this thing is cool. What this basically does is it gives you two tools. It gives you the ability to go ahead and scrape things, and it gives you the ability to mix things. Now, this is a really slick trick. So, for example, um, let's say I want to take a little bit of this yellow here. Remember, there's actually an infinite amount of this yellow. I'm going to go ahead and put it over here in the middle. Now, I can do two things. I can take this nice yellow thing and jam it into the green, but you know what's going to happen if that does it. Or I can clean it. A couple different ways you can clean it. I can stick it in the paint thinner and go do one of these and kind of ah, get it out of there. But you can see I just sort of spread it around. You can come over here and you can wipe it on this little cloth. That looks pretty good. Or my favorite method, let's go ahead and get a little goopy again, is you can just press the bottom circle button. I believe I'm just going to look underneath my helmet for a second here. That is the A key on the right hand. It's kind of a handy trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and now grab some of this green. Notice it's all on the bottom and jamming right into there. We're going to make this kind of yellowish green to sort of swirl it around just like that. Now, don't go into the white. Otherwise, you're going to have to build yourself a new palette. So be careful with that. So I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom of this to go scoop myself some of this nice white. And I'm just going to kind of spray just a little bit on there. Clean my brush. Yeah, actually, that could be a lot lighter. Go ahead and get some more of that. And we're just going to mix it in here make this kind of a uh, mottled color. I think we use just a little bit of green. And we'll go ahead and kind of mix that all in the round. Man, I'm already doing like my freaking impressions here. And I'm going to call that a nice color. And you're sitting there going, you need some black. You know what? We'll get a little smidge of black, too. Eh. Uh oh careful. You're going to do that about a thousand times, by the way. All right, we'll make it a little bit darker. Oh, yeah. That's an that's incredibly ugly color. Oh, boy. That's nice. Yuck. Okay, let's get rid of that. So now let's go ahead and play with this color here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this over here, put it away. Again, if you wanted to paint with this, you can. You know, I can actually scoop some of this up here and go. <laughs> it's going to be a little, so you can see it's kind of faded because there's not really, not a lot of paint on this. Basically, I just wiped all the paint off of it onto there. But again, do what works for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at our different brushes now. So basically, the brushes are going to be divided into kind of like how the fine point brushes, which by the way, if you hold one of these brushes in your hands, let's grab this one. If you take a look real quickly, you saw that there was this little icon there. If you use your joystick you can actually change between different variations of the same brush so you know i have this big one which can hold a lot of paint and i got this little teeny one which is like boop, little dot kind of a thing you know the same thing's true for like this brush actually not that one give me this one nope not that one i'm going to get it yeah there we go you can have a nice flat one like this or we can go to one like this and again it's up to you how you want to kind of play with that of course you've got your fan brush which everybody loves i find this to be a little tiny fan brush but mm, again not going crazy this is just a basic tutorial and of course if you need to raise something you got the sucker right here go and hang that up again i'm just clicking the uh, grip once clicking the grip once to put it back if i grab it and i want to switch to this one i can just grip it and i have to swap what spot the actual particular position is so let's go ahead and grab this monster thing now let's get some paint on this sucker so again and treat this just like as if it was a real brush. Of course, I'm, if you're like me, you're going to be adjusting your grip about 100 times. So when we collect paint, you know, you can collect paint on the side of the brush. You can collect paint on the other side of the brush. As you can see, you can actually do two different color paints in the brush. Or you can go ahead and ooh, really jam that sucker in there. You can see from the pressure icon, this is maximum. Now, if you look at the end of this brush, you can see it is absolutely covered in paint. You know, if I wanted to get rid of this in a hurry, there's a couple things I could do. Again, I could come over here and one of those things. Or again, I could just boop, press A, and it's gone. So if you overdo it, you can always underdo it. So let's go ahead and really get this thing all nice and gooped up. Oh, yeah, that's that, that's pretty goopy. And you can tell you've got paint because it gets a little shiny. So now the cool thing here is, depending on how you hurl it, you push it down, it's going to control what's going to happen. So if we come here and just use just the edge. 
And again, I have so much paint on this thing right now. I can pull that nice little line. You can see how there's less paint on it now. Let's come here. Again, I'm being very, very, very light. You can see how it already started to get lighter because we left some paint thinner up there, if you remember from earlier. And you can see with each stroke, it's using up a little more paint. Now, if I switch to the other side of the brush, remember, we've got a lot more dark paint on this side. Now, one of the great things about this is the fact that you're not at the mercy of uh, damaging your bristles here. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay, we got a ton of paint on here. A ton of paints. I'm not going to start getting all painter over here. But you can see how it starts to give up. You can try to use some of the other brush. But remember, the texture of the bristles will show up in the actual art. So one of the cool things you can actually do is you can push down really hard. Oh, I'm so sorry, bristles. I'm so sorry. You can get that last bit of paint out of there if you're looking to do something along like that. Uh, I'm not sure what we're going for. I think this is uh, like uh, storm clouds at night or something like that. So now there's a couple cool things we can do here. Now, of course, we can sit here if we want to thin it out a little bit. I can jam it in there real quick, and then we can come down here. But now we've got paint thinner on it, which is going to make the color considerably lighter. We almost got like a light gray. We can also use that now as a way to kind of blend our colors. Again, not a painter. I'm just kind of going on what works really well when you're first getting started here. And then if we made a little bit of a mess here, which I did, let's go ahead and clean that brush off. Of course, if you're hardcore, you can do bop, 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 like that. Oh, geez, I made it worse. <laughs> just press the A to get rid of it. You know, then we can come up here with my little cloth and we can pick up all my little boo-boos here. Okay, and you can have a lot of fun with this. And that's uh, kind of the whole point. All right, so that's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and hang that sucker up. So that's the absolute basics of uh, using this program. Now, one of the cool things is um, you're going to sit here and say, well, I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to put like a little apple right there. So you're like, okay. So you come over here, you get yourself, um, I like this one. And now let's get something a little bit bigger. We're going to go uh, broad strokes here, broad strokes. So you come in here, you get a little bit of this red and everything's looking good. And you go, boop, like this. Again, it's not going to be the world's prettiest apple. You probably notice that it's starting to blend because, like I said, they do not dry right away. So you have to kind of be ready for that sort of a thing to happen. Let's go ahead and get a little highlight on here. So you're like, oh, let's go get a highlight. Oh, oh, oh. And now your white has got red in it. So you kind of got to watch out for that because you're going to do that about a thousand times. So let's go ahead and put our little highlight in there. Gonna be a little bit of a curve. Again, I'm not an artiste here, so um, I'm making this up as I go along, as they say. But uh, according to Bob Ross, everything is a happy, you know, it's a little happy accident. I'm gonna try to blend to kind of fix my little boo-boo here. Give me that. This brush is like ridiculous. Oh my gosh. Oh no, what have we done? So if this happens to you, don't panic. All you have to do is press left joystick on your left hand and the problem goes away. So now let's see we run into this problem. We've got this really nice red I like, but when I go like this, I got a super dark red. You could sit over here and like fits with it, fits with it, fits with it, trying to get the color back, but you're never gonna get the color back right. So let me show you a really cool tip here from clean this brush. So what I do is I grab the palette knife, clean it, and then what you're gonna do is take the palette knife, just touch the color that you're interested in. See how it's got this little smidge? And we just find a nice clean spot, draw the color like this, boop, boop, boop. Go ahead and clean that up because we don't need it. And guess what just happened? We now have that cool red color that we wanted from before. So now if I want to come in here, I'll fix it. Let me adjust my grip here. Now if we needed to, we can come in here. I obviously got no paint on that at all. Wah! Give me some paint. I was like barely painted. And you can come in here now and actually suck some of that color up if you want to try to go ahead and uh, use it in another part of the drawing. This particular brush here is uh, not exactly what I consider efficient as far as uh, drawing here. I'll go ahead and clean that up, grab the other brush instead. This one will do it. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. And you can see you can basically sit here and kind of uh, recreate all the colors that you had earlier. Just by kind of stealing it directly off, I'm just going to do some blending here to make this a little bit nicer. And we can clean that up a little bit, too. Be careful, it becomes an obsession. And now we have an apple. <laughs> so it's just kind of a neat trick. Uh, apparently, at some point in the future, we're going to get the ability to actually kind of like save our colors or like have specific colors you smear down. So let's say you've kind of done your thing here and you've got your all your colors down, everything's ready. And you want to save this because you really like the colors you want. So what you can do is you can go back up to the eyeball here. Press the palette button. There's this is cool one that says you were palettes. You can come in and go pop. 
And now we have a copy of this palette. Now, I usually tell people when you're blending colors over here, these colors are going to blend more aggressively than the colors that you have on your actual objects here on your painting. So kind of keep that in mind if you're trying to steal colors off here and you want to use it for something else. It's going to be easier here and then onto here, then onto here, and then try to here because, again, this thing will get all nice and dry. So that's basically uh, your, your little pieces. Uh, when you're happy with your final piece of work here, again, I kind of want to come in here and make this like a marble table, but it becomes an obsession. Be careful. Uh, you can, of course, come over here. There's this little cute little button. There's this neat little spectator camera if you're worried about YouTube. Come in here. You can now go ahead and export this sucker up to 8K. You have studio mode, gallery mode, and neutral mode. Personally, I just like studio folder and just go boop and push that. It's going to give us the studio and the picture. Now, if we just want this bit, we can press the natural, press that button. Your computer's going to lag like crazy for about five minutes, and then you're going to get yourself a beautiful picture, which you can then take a look later on. All right, hopefully this video has been helpful for you. Again, uh, sorry about the audio. We're taking it right off the riff today, so it's going to be a little bit weird. This is a neat program. It's uh, fairly cost-effective, and you can really go absolute nuts. Like I say, you're really, really going to have fun with the YouTube option over here that you can watch somebody like paint something and use that as one of your bases on the actual painting itself. Enjoy. Oh, by the way, one thing. Uh, this guy right down here, if you uh, do put some color down on it, just remember, sorry about that. Let's grab some of that nice green I had from before. Nice. Clean that up. If you go like this, it erases it. So uh, one of the cool things you can do here, again, this is a, just something I just remembered. Sorry. Go ahead and put something like this. Make a big nasty mess here. Nice. Let's go ahead and grab a little brush. Boop. And let's get some paint thinner. A little bit of paint thinner, just a little bit. You have paint thinner, by the way, because your brush gets shiny. So then you can just come in here and you can kind of create your own little color. And then you can use this as sort of like a test zone. Obviously, I put down a ton of paint here, but you can see how it's starting to get a little bit lighter. And then if you're not happy with uh, whatever you did down here, at any point, you can just go boop, boop. And now it's come boop. Ugh, OCD kicking in. Nah, that's stuck. Can't do anything. All right. Now I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, kind of want to play with this because I think this is super duper cool. Hopefully the footage was stable enough for you. This is making me a slightly crazy here and this is going to become a slow obsession if, I, if I'm not careful. But you know how it goes. Enjoy.